Do you ever wonder if issues with erections are all in your head? Well, sometimes psychological factors or problems in your head are actually the cause. I'm Dr. Rita Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and if you're new here, I make content on sexual health, bladder health, and so much more. So make sure you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. Today, we're going to cover a few different things. We're going to start off talking about the three different kinds of erections. We're also going to talk about the link of psychogenic erectile dysfunction with mental health disorders, other causes of psychogenic erectile dysfunction, how we diagnose it, and what treatments are available if you're suffering from it. Did you know that there are three different types of erections? Well, the first type is reflexive erections. So that's erections that happen due to physical stimulation. So sometimes you may not be turned on at all, but you might get an erection due to some sort of physical stimulation. Another kind is nocturnal erections. So erections that occur at night. Nocturnal erections are usually non-sexual and are not really noticed by men. And they start in early adolescence and will occur throughout your life. Usually you'll have three to four nocturnal erections through out the night and usually you wake up with a morning erection. That's when most people will notice it. Very often that erection will also go away after urinating, but that's not exactly related to why the erection goes away. So psychogenic erections are the third type of erections, and these are due to a mental or visual image or something that is essentially causing you to have desire or sexual desire. Psychogenic erections are ones that are triggered in response to some sort of physical, image or mental image of something that's arousing you. When you get an erection, you need a very specific environment. You ha need to have an intact nervous system, meaning that all your neural connections from your brain to your penis are working well. You need good blood flow to the penis. You also need your hormones to be working correctly. So those are chemical messengers that play a role in producing erections. And lastly, you need a good mindset. Psychogenic erectile dysfunction is the inability to get or maintain an erection during sex due to psychological factors. And there's a whole host of them. These can include things like self-esteem, depression, anxiety, relationship issues, and we'll go over all of these in a little bit more detail. In fact, mental health disorders and erectile dysfunction are very commonly linked. When you look at a multitude of studies, you'll find that people who have erectile dysfunction are somewhere between two to four times more likely to have conditions such as depressive symptoms or have a pessimistic or negative outlook on life and have more emotional stress. But how do you know if you have depression? Well, there are certain characteristic symptoms that you can have that are indicative of maybe being depressed. Symptoms of depression can include feelings of feeling sad or down for a prolonged period of time, at least two weeks or longer. Very often, this can also be with feelings of anxiety or feeling negative and feeling generally hopeless about your life. You might find that if you're suffering from depression, you're not as interested in the things that you used to enjoy, like your normal hobbies or activities. You may also find yourself moving a little slower, uh, either physically moving slower or actually having a slower speech. Some people will notice that they're having a change in their appetite and their sleep. They might either have difficulty sleeping or sleeping for longer periods of time. You may have strong feelings of hopelessness or guilt or feeling like you're not worth anything. And lastly, in very severe cases, you can have feelings of wanting to end your life. If you find yourself suffering from any of these symptoms, particularly if you're feeling like ending your life, please make sure to call the suicide hotline right away and get help. But what happens? Are people depressed and so they get erectile dysfunction or does erectile dysfunction cause the depression? Well, in fact, it can go both ways. When people are depressed, they can often have really difficulty engaging with their partner and difficulty getting interest in having intercourse, which can then make it harder to get erection. On the other side of it, erectile dysfunction can be really damaging and it can make people have a lot of depressive or anxious symptoms, which can become clinical depression. So what are some other causes outside of depression that can cause psychogenic erectile dysfunction? Well, certainly having a significant amount of stress can make it very difficult to focus on 
pleasure or having desire for intercourse, which can lead to issues with erectile dysfunction. Similarly, having feelings of anxiety or in particular performance anxiety. So what happens when you have performance anxiety, you may have an issue where you don't perform as well as you'd like that causes stress. And that takes your focus instead of enjoying the pleasure or the sensations that you're having during intercourse, you're actually focused on trying to perform, which then causes it to be more difficult to actually perform. And that actually continues to compound itself and gets really into a bad cycle. And it can be very difficult to break relationship issues. If you're not communicating with your partner or you're having difficulties in your relationship, that can also lend itself to having difficulty getting erections. And particularly if you're having difficulties communicating with each other about what you need. Other things can be feelings of guilt. So if you're having feeling guilty about your performance abilities or stress or other things in your life, you can bring that with you to the bedroom as well as self-esteem issues. So if there's reasons that you're feeling down on yourself for other causes that can also make it more difficult to perform in the bedroom. Sometimes cultural issues can become a problem. If your culture has certain beliefs about intercourse, particularly if it's, you know, not having sex before marriage or other things like that can also contribute. If you've had previous trauma in relation to sexual activity or rape or things like that, obviously that can cause difficulties with performance. And lastly, excessive pornography use for some people who get really used to a certain type of stimulation, either manually or visually seeing a certain type of stimulation. It can then be difficult to achieve erection due in other types of scenarios where you're having stimulation with your partner. If you want to learn more about pornography pros and cons, make sure you check out my video where I talk about that. And if you're having difficulties with pornography, make sure you check out my video about how to break the cycle of addiction. Interestingly, having psychogenic erectile dysfunction may not be as simple as it sounds. There's actually new data that suggests there's actually changes in the brain of men who suffer from psychogenic erectile dysfunction that can contribute specifically in areas like the cerebral cortex, the nucleus accumbens and the prefrontal amygdala pathways. First, when you meet with your doctor, if you're suffering with issues of erectile dysfunction, we'll kind of want to understand more about when this is happening. Is it happening all the time or is it in specific situations? So we'll look at, is it generalized erectile dysfunction or is it situational erectile dysfunction? So generalized means that it occurs all the time. Then we want to think about other medical causes that might contribute to it to make sure that that's may be the cause. More commonly in psychogenic erectile dysfunction, it's more often situational. That can be due to your partner, that can be due to the performance anxiety, or that can be due to psychological disorders, as we talked about already, like mood disorders, depression, anxiety, those sorts of things. And the other things that kind of clue us into it being more of a psychologic cause is that it occurs all of a sudden, whereas people who have medical causes of erectile dysfunction, typically it occurs more gradually and you will continue to have nighttime erections. They'll usually be quite rigid. So you'll still wake up in the morning with a good solid erection. Whereas when you're having other causes of erectile dysfunction, you may notice that it's more sporadic that you're waking up with a good erection in the morning. Also, because we know erectile dysfunction can lead to problems in the relationship, we kind of want to figure out, did these problems of anxiety or mood disorders or partner issues start after the erectile dysfunction or did they start before them? Because typically if they started before them, it's more likely that the erectile dysfunction is psychogenic than if they've started after them. Another test that sometimes urologists will use is looking at nocturnal penile tumescence. And you may have seen kind of a home rigged version of this on sex in the city. She went to sleep hoping her mail had sufficient postage to deliver his package into her box. The next day, Charlotte woke up as excited as a little girl on Christmas morning, and she couldn't wait to see if Trey's package was unwrapped. But the test that we have available to us in urology can let us know how many erections you're having at night, how long they're happening and how rigid they get. And obviously if you're having continued nocturnal erections, but during the daytime when you're trying to have intercourse with your partner, you're unable to get rigid, firm erections, then we know that it's psychological. However, this test has many flaws. It's very expensive. And so it's very infrequently used. So most of the time we'll, 
diagnose psychogenic erectile dysfunction based on discussions with you rather than doing any sort of testing. So now let's move on to treatments. What sort of treatments are available for psychogenic erectile dysfunction? Well, the first one is if you see a psychologist or psychiatrist, you can undergo something called cognitive behavioral therapy. So what that really focuses on is understanding your knowledge and your expectations of what sexual intercourse should have and to then realize what's possible, what's impossible, and what's realistic and work on kind of reframing your mindset about sexual intercourse. Another option is sex therapy with what we call sensate focus exercises. And what that is is basically focusing on what they call non-genital and non-demand pleasuring exercises. So it focuses on physical touch, but not with any expectation of intercourse to try and really recalibrate your brain on focusing on the pleasure of touch and rather than thinking about the other things because the expectation of intercourse is now off the table. In the description down below, you can find a website where you can look for sex therapists in your area if you think this is the right option for you. The other thing is if you are suffering from depression or anxiety, you can see your primary doctor or a psychiatrist to get treatment for depression or anxiety. You do have to be careful because some medications for depression actually cause as a side effect, low libido. So you want to talk to your primary doctor about that, whoever's prescribing it for you to make sure that, you know, because you're having a lot of erectile dysfunction or a lot of issues with sexual function that you want to steer clear of any medications that give you that side effect. It's very difficult sometimes to talk about these issues with your psychiatrist or your primary care doctor because they're not typically asking you about it, but it's important to bring it up so you get started on the right medication. And lastly, you can try medications for what we call medical erectile dysfunction like sildenafil or tadalafil. If you want to learn a little bit more about how those work, you can check out my video which covers those. What I found sometimes in patients is that it can kind of break the cycle of performance anxiety or stress related to having difficulty with erections. If you can get erections with medication, it can then give you that confidence back and allow you to have intercourse without the stress of having issues with erections. However, you need to be careful with this because it's not always a home run particularly if you and your partner have not had intercourse or satisfactory intercourse in a very long time, you can both come to the table with different expectations and you may have a very narrow view of what exactly is going to happen during the sexual encounter. You may want to incorporate more foreplay and make sure that you have low expectations and try to enjoy the process rather than thinking about sex the way we see it on mainstream media. Also, the best option is to do some form of cognitive behavioral therapy or sex therapy at the same time as medical therapy. That's going to give you the best outcomes. I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.